Good morning, and welcome to the National Shrine of Our Lady of Tessahova. We are glad that you are here to pray and come closer to God. Everyone, is coming, everyone coming to Mass today is a listening participant in the Word of God, but would you like to participate in proclaiming the Word of God? The Shrine is looking for new lectors of all ages. If you feel you might have the call and passion to be a lector, please call the Shrine's main office or join us at our training session, which is taking place tomorrow evening in the Lower Church at 7 p.m. We will be glad to answer any questions that you might have or provide you with guidance should you become interested in joining this holy and spiritual ministry. We celebrate the Feast of St. Anne today. The solemn mass will be said at 1230 in Polish, po uh, followed by a devotion and procession to the chapel of St. Anne. We ask that you wear your mask inside the church at all times and remove it only for Holy Communion. We advise everyone to receive Holy Communion on the hand. This is just a temporary situation and we hope people will understand this for the love of neighbor and safety of others. Holy Communion on the tongue would be distributed at the tabernacle on the left hand side of the church. Our cafeteria is open today. Dining both inside and out as well as takeout are available. There are some picnic tables on the grounds for your use. The religious bookstore is open as well. Our sincere and prayerful gratitude is extended to all who continue to support Our Lady's Shrine during this pandemic. May God reward you with the continual intercession of Our Lady of Chesahova. Today is the 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our focus, the wise seek God. When Solomon asked for an understanding heart to lead his people, he must have known that it was the one gift that opened the door to every other gift. For wisdom, prudence, is the virtue that guides all other virtues and grounds judgment. The wise seek God, and those who know him seek to know him more, as Solomon and the parables demonstrate. God tells Solomon to ask for anything, and he asks for an understanding heart to lead his people. St. Paul writes to the Romans that all things work for good for those who love God. In the gospel, Jesus use, uses three parables, buried treasure, pearl of great price, and a full fish net to explain the kingdom of heaven. Today's Mass is being offered for the repose of the soul of Mr. and Mrs. Pozulski. Our pre-celebrant is Father Sebastian. Please rise and join us in our entrance hymn. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. 
My dear friends, the desire of Solomon today is to what sets us apart from the merchant uh, who risks his whole livelihood to buy what he judges to be the pearl of great price. They can make these sacrifices with certainty because the treasure, that pearl that Jesus speaks about within the gospel corresponds with the very call and the purpose of God in our lives. And what is that purpose? To be conformed to the image of his son in all his glory. So with this in mind, let us acknowledge our sins as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us into everlasting life. Lord.
us pray. O oh God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow an abundance of mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. God said, ask something of me and I will give it to you. Solomon answered, O oh Lord my God, you have made me your servant, king to succeed my father David. But I am a mere youth, not knowing at all how to act. I serve you in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a people so vast that it cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding heart to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong. For who is able to govern this last vast people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon had made this request. So God said to him, because you have asked for this, not for a long life for yourself, nor for riches, nor for the life of your enemies, but for an understanding so that you may know what is right. I do as you requested. I give you a heart so wise in understanding that there has never been anyone like you up to now. And after you, there will come no one equal to you the word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we know that all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field, which a person finds and hides, and again, and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends in Christ, since the dawn of time, people have been looking for treasure. In bygone days, they would search in the fields, hills, under the sea. If only they could find gold or diamonds or pearls, they would be happy. Today, people are still looking for treasure except now they look for it in the lottery, casino, stock market. If only they could hit the jackpot, all their troubles would be over. In one way or another, all of us are treasure hunters. All of us are looking for something that will make us completely happy. Look at the protesters today. What are they searching for? I think they're searching for the wrong things because if they want to, they can go to other countries and find it. All of us are looking for something that will make us completely happy. There is nothing wrong with this. If we were happy, then the artist would not be waiting nor the writer be writing. Christ encourages us and our searching, as the gospel story tells us. 
Christ loved searchers. He had sympathy for those who were looking, even if they were looking in the wrong places for the wrong things. He understood their hunger. He understood their thirst. He was able to point them to the right direction, but he couldn't do nothing for the smug or the dissatisfied. Christ compared the kingdom of God to a rare pearl as a priceless treasure. In other words, the kingdom of God is with everything we have. Those who find it are truly fortunate. Even if the eyes of the world appear to be foolish, poor, In the eyes of God, they are wise, they are rich. The kingdom of God is a very simple concept. It means to know that one is a child of God with a divine dignity and an eternal destiny. It means to know the meaning of life and how to live it, very simple but we make things so complicated. Our chief task in life is not to be successful or even to be fulfilled. It is to live properly. No one can be happy who misses the main purpose of life. The only question that really matters is how best to live in this world. And those who find the answer to this question have found the pearl. The pearl of great price is not an illusion. The parable underlies the unstrained joy of one who finds the pearl. When a sense of the presence of God, a certainty about his love for us, suddenly burst upon us that is something wonderful. It brings peace, contentment to our heart, joy to us. And it makes us appreciate the beauty of life. Happy those who taste this joy, even if it's only sporadically. But happier still are those for whom it is reality in which they can live to taste, to taste the joy of the kingdom involves a letting go of all other things. Not in the sense that we have to give up everything entirely. We still need certain amount of things to live within this life. Why we have to do this is to let go of the dependence on them of the way they make the be-all and end-all of our lives. Life is unintelligible, unbearable without God. And a very close relationship with God is a real treasure. We have proof of that in all the saints that have lived. They found that treasure and they went after that pearl of great price. A close relationship with God is a real treasure. It gives us a sense of who we are, where we're going. Only God can give us what we are looking for many times. If we find God, we find it all. To have faith in this day and age is not to have all the answers. It doesn't mean all the work is done for us. The opposite would be nearer the truth. Faith commits us to a life of of discovering, searching, of yearning for God. It is only the, it is not in the holy places like churches or religious occasions that we find God and feel close to him. In Jesus' story, It was the man 
who went to go and dig for that pearl, that task to find the treasure. And the treasure we look for is hidden in the ground on which we stand. Those who belong to the kingdom, those who belong to the kingdom will taste real joy, even here on earth. But that joy is only a foretaste, only a foretaste of what they will experience in the hereafter. When will they come into the full possession of the kingdom of God? John Paul II once said, when you try to discern if what you are to do right or wrong, search whether it is pleasure or if it is happiness. Remember, pleasure is fleeting. Happiness remains. Are you searching? Are you fleeing? Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of things visible and invisible. I believe in the one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, come constantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us ask the Lord for the gift of wisdom to distinguish right from wrong with an understanding heart. That the church may stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the peace of Christ will banish all violence disruption and danger from our mists and defend us against every evil being done to our world, especially here in our country. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all medical personnel in the fostering of human life at every stage, for the generous care of disabled, the aging and the dying, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our young people will entrust themselves to the joy of the gospel and oppose the illusions of the world of materialism. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our, our sisters and brothers who bear Christ's suffering in body, mind, and spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. For those facing difficult decisions or stressful problems, that God will give them help and serenity. 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, that they embrace the precious pearl of being with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in the kingdom of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, who makes all things work together for the good of those who love you, conform us to the image of your Son to enter the glory he gained on the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You form man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and blemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant your peace to God, uniting governor throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, Nelson, our Bishop, and all who hold the and to all those who holding to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and the hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter, Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clemens, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may defend it by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously ex accept this oblation of our service, that of our, your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O Lord, we pray, to bless and acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven to you, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. On the day before he was to suffer, in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, that you that these gifts be borne by your hands of your angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, that all of us who through the participation at the altar may receive your most holy body and blood of your son and be filled with every grace and blessing. Remember also your servants, Lord, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you in their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, filled with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command, in form of divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Thank you. Let us offer each other some sign of Christ's peace. May the being of the body of the Lord just rise and receive them.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads. May the God of all consolation order your days in your peace and grant you the gifts of his blessing. Amen. May he free you always from every distress and conform your hearts in his love. Amen. So that on this life's journey you may be effective in good works, rich in gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and may come happily to eternal life. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come upon you and reign with you forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. I used incense today because we found out that the incense kills the germs in the area. So whatever germs we have should have been gone away with the incense. And it also praised the Lord. Blessed are the poor in spirit, longing for their Lord. For God's coming kingdom shall be theirs. Blessed are the sorrowing, for they shall be consoled. And the meek shall come to Are they?